Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about my secret for black and white photography. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Armini. I'm a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, France. And this is my video 7 out of my challenge 30 days, 30 video. All right, I want to talk to you about black and white photography and the importance of being constant in the way you do your black and white. I have published two books, I mean, 10 hours, my publisher in Germany published two books, one on Paris, one on New York, and I wanted to give a certain style to my photos. And I'm going to show you how I retouch the photos, the tricks that I use. But in this video, you get the opportunity to win one of my books, whether it's Paris or New York. All you have to do for this is two things. One, subscribe to my YouTube channel if it's not already done. And two, leave me a comment and tell me whether you want the Paris book or the New York book. And I will, wherever you are on this planet, I will sign it for you and then I will send it to you. A simple comment on this YouTube video. All right, with no further ado, let me show you my secret to black and white photography. I'm here in Lightroom and I want to show you um, a really cool trick about doing black and white. First of all, uh, you know, in case you don't know this, but if you're in Lightroom and if you're a Creative Cloud member, you can go here and click here, sync with Lightroom Mobile. You, you know, you put in your Creative Cloud login and password, and then you can create collections on Lightroom. If you don't know how to create collections, you can always look on my YouTube channel. I've got many um, videos about that. And on any collection, you can right click here and click here, sync with Lightroom Mobile. You will get this little a sign here, meaning that it's going to go on the web and it's going to go on your Lightroom mobile, it's going to go everywhere. And one feature that I love to do, and that's how I'm going to show you my black and white photo, you see, I'm here on the website called lightroom.adobe.com and I've signed in with my you know, Creative Cloud login and password. All my collections are here and here is my Venice book, okay? I'm on the collection called my Venice book and I click here, click here on a slideshow and it's going to make a slideshow. I can even share the slideshow on the web. I can do all kinds of things and I actually think the slideshow feature uh, on the web is better than the one you have in Lightroom. I wanted to show you the slideshow so you get a sense of the importance of a look in black and white. You see how all my photos have kind of a, a similar look and this is something my publisher really likes a lot. This is something that customers likes a lot. You know, it's a dramatic look. It is my look. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's a classic, you know, black and white finite look. Now, when you make a book like I'm, I'm doing, you know, that in on Paris and New York and now in Venice, I need to be consistent. And the only way to be consistent that I find that really works well is to work with presets. So that's really like, like my secret to black and white is to work with presets. And I'm going to show you how I, uh, how I do this. And it goes really fast. So here I am in Lightroom. I took five raw files that I'm ready to, that I want to make, you know, into my book, into black and white. And I'm going to go to the develop module and I'm going to go up here. And you see, I created a special series of presets called Surge Fine Art Black and White. Now, first of all, I want to show you how you can install this. For this, it's really simple. You go to Lightroom, Preference. Then you go to the second time called Presets. Then you go to Show Lightroom Presets Folder. You click on that. And that's going to put you into the finder, okay? In the Lightroom folder. Go on to this option. You want to see what's inside the Lightroom folder and what you're looking for because Lightroom is completely preset based. What you're looking for is the folder called Develop Preset. In that folder, you will find there's a lot of subfolders. This folder is already there, Search, Find Art, Black and White, and you can get for free uh, the, the link of this presets under this video. It's right there to be downloaded. And uh, basically, uh, it's here. And you just, you know, unzip the folder that I give you and you just drag and drop it here in Develop Presets. And the result will be, you restart Lightroom and the result will be in the preset folder, you will have this. Once you have that, now comes the magic. And so, for example, I created a whole bunch of presets. Preset number one is called Basic. And a preset is only, only, only a, uh, you know, um, a starting point. What basic is, it's just a regular, you know, black and white conversion. Doesn't work so well in this photo, so I'm going to keep on continue. I'm going to go to basic gradient. Basic gradient is basically the same idea. It's a conversion of black and white, but it's got a big, strong gradient on top and the bottom. 
doesn't work for this photo. Then I'm going to go to basic linear radial dark. That means that this preset has linear gradients and radial filters and it's very dark. Now I'm going to go to basic linear radial and light. And now this starts to look at something. This one has a basic conversion. It's got a linear gradient and light. And then I've got one more, which is basic, two more actually, basic, linear, radial, and middle. So that's like a middle exposure between light and dark. And it has a linear gradient and a radial gradient. And then the last one is called high key. And um, high key is a different look. So on this one, the, like, the one I like the most is basic, linear, radial, light. Uh, this, I think, is the one that worked the best. Now, a, a, a preset is always, always a starting point. So first thing first, I'm going to go here and remove that ugly sensor dust that's really annoying here to start with. Um, voila. Then I'm going to go into the linear gradient and I'm going to maybe, maybe, so you, you have to, in, on every photo, you have to go and set the linear gradients because they are by default. I want to make this a little brighter. Uh, this may be a little darker. That's good. You can always then go into the basic settings. You can hold on the option key, click on your blacks. You see my blacks might be a little strong on this one. My whites are really, so I'm holding the option key. I want to go all the way to pure white, which is really far, and then back and down. That's going to completely change the photo. And you can see up left a, pre a preview of what I'm doing. Okay, that's already looking much better. Okay, and then last but not least, very important, I'm going to go into uh, my radial circle, which is here. And uh, so the way the radial circle works, it's just like a little bit of a light into your photo. And you just change the size and, and, and the value of each one. So this one, I always have like to have something pretty bright in my photo. I think this one, and you know, these circles have two, two settings by default, exposure and, and clarity. I'm going to minus a bit of clarity and maybe a bit of exposure on this one. Uh, this one, what I'm trying to do is with the circle is I'm trying to break the tones, meaning I'm looking for something that's got an even tone, like this truss, for example, has, has got an even tone. It's got the same value everywhere. I'm going to put one circle on it, around it and maybe make it a bit stronger. This one, I'm going to maybe put it here as a water reflection, but now it's kind of too strong, so I'm going to lower its power. Okay, now this one, I'm going to put it here because these buildings have the same tonal value. I don't like that. And you see in a few clicks, you know, your black and white start shaping up. Okay, this one, I'm going to put it on that spot. And really what I'm looking for in the photo is like, okay, what do I want to enhance? You know, where do I want the viewer to look at? Okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Now the photo is kind of crooked. So I'm going to go into, uh, uh, into upright auto, see what it's going to give me. Not bad. Not bad, but I think I'm going to go to, uh, I think I'm just going to go to uh, level, see what that gives me. Yeah, level is fine. I just wanted to, to level a little bit the photo. And voila, in a few clicks, of course, you know, for my book, I spend more time, you know, making sure there's no sensor dust. But in the essence, the, you know, the biggest of the, of the uh, retouching has been down. Voila, so that's, that's a cool black and white. Now I'm going to take the next photo and, and uh, I'm going to go through my, my presets. So basic, you see, and when you go through, you can see a little preview here. Sometimes it's kind of lagging. Uh, and if you don't click on it, you only see the preview. So basic is kind of cool on this one. I love the lone exposure. Uh, basic gradient, I believe is going to be too dark. Uh, I can see it here in the preview. And you don't have to wait for it to render. You can just look here. You see in this preview here, so I can, that's what I usually do. I don't even click, I just, I get a sense, you know. I think light is going to be the best one on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go to light again. So I click on light. And voila. And uh, I'm going to go and do, uh, you know, my linear gradients, making them sure that they are a little higher up. I like the idea of the black here, but not too much. This one is cool. You always have three. In my preset, you always have three. One for the bottom and two for the top. And if you think it's too strong, you can just erase one and you know, you don't have to stick to it. And maybe I'm going to make this one a, a little, you know, like this and like this and a little stronger. You know, you just adapt to whatever you feel like, you know. I think it was a mistake to erase the other one. So I'm going to do command Z, command Z a couple of time. Voila. I want to put back. Yeah, there's a lot of commands. You know, here it is. Okay, now I've put back. You know, you can just go command Z, command Z, command Z to undo. 
I like the fact that the, the sky is really black, a very uh, Ansel Adam type of style. Okay, and on this one, so once I've done the linear gradient, that's when I usually go and adjust my blacks and white. You have to adjust your black and white. I think I want to make my black a bit darker this time. And the white, maybe a little bit brighter. You have to adjust the black and white on every photo. Highlights and shadows, sometimes I don't touch, but black and white, I do. Um, I think my white are a little strong here. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the radial circle. And uh, I'm going to put a radial just on that church here, maybe on the door, you know, so that it's something in the middle, maybe there. I'm just trying to, as I said, break the tones. This I'm not going to use. Maybe I'm going to make one big here on the stairs to make a sort of a leading line. Uh, and then this one, I'm going to put it maybe here just to get the texture of the brick, you know, to come through, but, you know, on a lower value. The trick is you want to be able to do your circles and then look at something else for like 10, 15 minutes, come back to it. And uh, if you see the circle, uh, you know you've gone too far. You've gone too far. Uh, you don't want that. Uh, okay, maybe this one, I'm going to put this one this, on this church here. If you see the circles, if you, see, if you ask yourself, did I do the circle or not? You know you're good. You know you're good. Okay, that's my basic conversion. I'm then going to jump into uh, upright auto to see if it does a good job. No, 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 it does not do a good job. So on this one, I might just, uh, you know, try guided. I like guided, you know. I'm gonna click here to make one line here. Just wanna get a church kind of straight and one line here, but not too much, not too straight, something like this. And as soon as you do the second guide, yeah, it makes it straight, yeah, that's, for me, is a little more natural. And, you know, I might add, um, might go to uh, effects, and add a, even more post crop vignetting on this one, you know, uh, and even more contrast on this one. You know, you, as I said, it's only starting one, but I'm, this one is almost good to go. You know, I would inspect it, make sure there's not one sensor dust whatsoever. And let's carry on to the next photo. This is a very high ISO photo because I shot it, you know, uh, uh, not on a tripod, but let's see what I'm gonna go here. And, uh, oh, high key. High key seems to be working good on this one. So again, you know, just a basic conversion. Uh, you go into the linear gradient. The high key does not have a gradient here on top, or it. Oh yeah, sorry, it does. It does, uh, maybe, but it makes it brighter, or not. It doesn't make it brighter. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to use. Yeah, maybe I'm going to make it this darker, uh, a little bit, just to close the photo. And this one, I'm going to make this one darker. Yeah, high key's got. Uh, is making this one brighter, but makes the overall photo brighter. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the radial circle. I'm doing this really quick, but you get the essence of it. You know, spend some time looking at your photo and placing your circles. You, I don't wanna put it here, it's, now it's become too bright. I think I'm gonna put it, you know, and if you don't know where to put it, you know, you can just erase a circle. You don't have to stick to, I use a lot of circles in my photos, but you don't have to, to do that. Okay, maybe this one here. Okay, and this one, the, not this one I'm going to erase. Voila. Now there's a lot too much noise on this photo, so I'm going to jump right over to the details panel to, uh, you know, to deal with the noise. So uh, it's a very high ISO photo. I think I'm going to go like 30 noise reduction and, you know, maybe 16 sharpening and, uh, and masking is good. So yeah, that's much better in terms of noise. And another one, let's do one more. And uh, so this one, I'm just going through here. I'm looking at the preview. So sometimes the preview takes a while to come along. I think this one, uh, I think middle is gonna be, the, on this one, I'm going to do the middle. And same idea, you know, first thing you do is you go into your linear gradients and you adapt them for the photo. Voila. Voila. And, uh, and then you jump right into uh, the basic settings always, you know, make sure your black point is good. I like to have about three, four percent of my photo completely black. So that's, that's some good value. And often when I do the white point, I, I, I hold on the option key just to see how far I can go. And then I go back and I drop my option key and I just, I, I do it per taste. Okay, that's good. And then um, I'm gonna do the linear, the radial circle. Uh, now, where do I want to break the tones? Maybe on this beautiful monument here, on the San Marco Plaza, an early morning. Uh, definitely here. 
on the on the, on this beautiful church okay and you know you see how the linear gradient is a little too strong here and it's also doing something here on the on the building so what i do is i click the linear gradient i go to brush uh, I make sure my brush, I hold on the option key so I have an eraser, making sure auto mask is on and the flow is about 50. Very important flow 50. So now my brush is in eraser and I can erase the effect off. And wh whenever I am here at the corner, I, I use auto mask. When I'm not at the corner, I take auto mask off. And all I'm trying to do is that I don't want the linear gradient to have so much power on that building. But remember, you have two linear gradients. So I have to se select the second one and do the same thing. Click on brush, hold on the option key, make sure auto mask is on when I'm close to the border and I'm erasing whatever is going on here. Voila. And then I'm going to take auto mask off because I'm out of the border and I'm just going to erase whatever is going on. Now, this takes a bit of processing. There's usually a bit of lag. Here you go. And now if I go here and I look before the linear gradient um, and after the linear gradient, you see it has less effect on that building. Okay, there's a whole bunch of ses sensor does that would take care of, but I don't want to bore you with that. And I'm going to go here to upright auto. I'm going fast just to show you uh, auto doesn't do a good job. So I'm going to go to guided and I'm just doing this to show you, you know, uh, how fast you know, you can go by having the right presets. And I love my presets and I'm giving them for you for free. So you can do your own fine art black and white in that sort of very dramatic style that's, that has been popular in photography for many, many years. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, sometimes Guided does a better job than Auto. So, up, Guided, I'm back to Guided, that's good. And um, last but not least, a little high key photo from my wife. My wife took this photo and I put it in the book and uh, with this, her authorization. And I just click on the high key and boom. It works really great with super, super long exposure because when you make a very long exposure, you know, uh, the the water becomes white. Um, and uh, so this, this is made for this type of photo. I did a lot of very, very like five, six minute exposure. When the sky is white, what happens after five, six minutes, the water becomes purely white. So voila, that's how you can use preset to do amazing black and white and uh, in no time. So download my presets, have fun with it. And don't forget that if you leave a comment on this video, you get a chance to win a copy of my New York or Paris book, whichever you choose uh, for free. I'm going to ship it to you wherever you are in this planet. Signed with, uh, by me with my hand. Voila, mesdames et messieurs. All right, guys, I hope you like this. Remember, just leave me a comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell me whether you want the Paris book or the New York book, and I will send it to you for free. I will pick one winner out of all the comments and send him the book. Two more things I want to ask you. As you know, I've been talking a lot about on my channel. I'm coming up with a movie where I'm the lead actor called The Hollywoodans. It's a movie, it's a comedy about Hollywood, about reaching your dreams and trying to make it in the craziness of Hollywood. It's, I hope, a funny movie. I enjoy doing it. And it's for pre-sales on iTunes in 77 countries. And we're trying to get as much pre-order as possible because pre-orders really makes a difference to get any attention in the movie industry. So if you ever wanted to do something for me, ever wanted to make me smile, pre-order the movie on iTunes now. You get all the links in the video under this video or go to thehollywoodlands.com to do that. Also, last but not least, I came out with my biggest course ever called Photoshop for Photographer 2017. 66 videos, 21 different projects. My biggest course ever on Photoshop. Check that out too. Voila, see you tomorrow.